Hello and welcome back to a brand new episode of MotoGP 21. Now in today's episode we are off to the first ever MotoGP race, the TT of Assen all the way back in the 50s. It's been on the calendar ever since, it's gone under some serious changes since the track day race back in the day. But today we have some small bit of upgrading to do first in the Moto2 class. We can do either a frame upgrade or we can do electronics i am going to go with a frame upgrade just get that on i don't have anything else i can do in the bike development so i'm gonna to go to team development finances or r d um i'm gonna go with the engine one just to get that banged out but anyway that's about everything we can do so let's jump over to Assen. so you join me at the dutch tt for qualifying two a track that has never been a Ducati track out and out. A lot of fast flowing sectors that really don't suit a Ducati. So currently it's P1 is a Ducati, I must say. So I'm going to just slide up the inside of a lace there. Give them zero room. Pretty decent opening. Couple of corners to the lap. But I feel pretty good around here. I was pretty quick in Q1. I was two turns quicker than what Peko is currently done. Completely got strubbing wrong there. To carry too much speed in and it probably oh no still two tenths i was gonna say it probably shows on the delta but i'm actually two tenths under him so come through this very fast corner i actually lost the front there would you leave it i could just see the bike tuck forward here was a bit too high so another two tenths there so we're on for pole if we can get it to the line i have an interesting dilemma for the race for tires i don't know what front tire i'm going to go with I'm on a front soft at the moment and it feels pretty nice, but the tyre wear is a bit too high, I believe. And the medium makes the bike understeer and change direction quite slow, so I don't really want to go with it, but we might be forced into it. We'll see what the game tells us in the race. We'll Coming into the last sector, we are up by 0 0.6. What can we do? We come into the last couple of corners, into this tight chicane. Key not to invalidate the lap, and we did up to the line. It's going to be a woman at 30.4, so the AI are pretty rapid in the final sector. Yeah, how about you? Okay, so it ends up a tenth and a half only quicker than Fabio. So the AI seem to have silly pace around there, so we're going to have a battle on our hands. Paul Espargaro up into P4, that's a great right from him, and Miller back to some form in P5. So, for the first time in a long time, I've gone with the recommended tyre, which is soft front, medium rear. Pecco's gone with a hard front. That should make him a bit of a boat. Most riders have gone with the soft medium, Rossi's up the hard front. Um, Taking a bit of fuel out as well, just because... This track, a lot of it is full throttle and you're left, right, left, right. You're not really going to use Power 3 that often. So I would rather have a bike that's slightly less fuel in it, lighter, change direction a bit easier. And a bit more of a compliant bike over the race distance. So that's what the thinking behind that was. But with the soft front, the bike handles better. I'm quicker. It's just a question, will it go the race distance? I'm not the only one to take the gamble. But there's only one way to find out. Also, as well, the cloudy conditions should help with temperatures at the front, so that will benefit us, I would believe. Here we are on pole position for the Dutch TT, one of the best rounds of the season. What can we do from pole? Five red lights, and we are off a bit of a delayed start. Can the Ducati grunt get me into turn one in the lead? No, it cannot. I believe Fabio... Quartararo should have break me, but he didn't. I actually hold the lead, so yes, I do hold the lead. So nine laps of just lovely, fast-flowing track. I'm going to just take it handy now with the opening lap. See what the AI's pace is like behind me. I'm not going to push too early because of that soft front. I want it to come to me. I just want to give it a, a nice, easy couple of laps. Good drive out of strubbing that time. It's lovely bit of track here, it's so fast and flowing. Ducati isn't the best bike for it, but it's good enough just to get us through. Fabio's still hot on my tails. It's not going to be an easy race this one. 
the AI do seem to have serious pace and usually they can race faster than the qualifying times and I barely have qualified them so you know that stands for that they'll have ridiculous race pace but the fact I got the whole shot and into the lead early means we should be able to hold them up slightly and manage our own race not an easy track for the AI to get back past so we're going to use that to our advantage with this Ducati now key to this race as well is this last sector not getting too many warnings very good opening lap exactly how I would have wanted to start this race controlling it from the front just on the trail break I'm just being a touch gentle in the right handers just don't want to scrub the tyre too much yet Be a bit more aggressive on the left handers because there's fewer left handers around here. We are pulling a gap though. It's up to almost a second to Fabio. Maybe his pace isn't the best. Or maybe I'm just able to use a bit more of the potential of my bike early in this race with that soft front even though he's on a soft as well so I don't see why he should be struggling early on love that bit of track there you just go so fast through it oh and up over there got a little lively A crash further back I can't look through this sector it's not anyone in the top nine anyway or eight I should say the 30.8 so we're in the one in the 30s from the box on power two so that is a decent lap time it's about half a second slower than my qualifying lap which is ideal race pace so here we are to start of lap five pace is pretty good it's still Fabio in second he's about two seconds behind so we've managed to break him a bit but the front tire is slowly but surely becoming a small bit of an issue the right side of my front is I would say just a bit below half and it is starting to push me wide I'm actually losing a lot of entry speed thankfully I'm still pretty quick compared to the eye doing a 1 minute 30.4 in lap 3 fast lap of the race so far for me and that was quicker than pretty much everyone in qualifying so the pace even on the race tyres and race fuel is still pretty strong so we should still have enough i'm just a bit anxious about what will the front tire be like in the last latter of the race and i'll be interested to see as well if fabio gets passed by peco what would happen there we just tip off the curb there and we got our first track limits warning small bit of mistake again i can't really get stopped into corners the bike wants to run on a bit too much at the moment so the gap is down to 1.5 we made a mistake in two the final chicane just got in a bit hot and that has left them big mistake i turn in too early they're coming they can smell the blood i'm making a couple of mistakes this last few seconds there now my front tire is in a bad way at the moment i'd like to know how fabio's is it's under a second so they're coming and they're coming with a rake of them as well there's about five of them all in one group so we might have a bit of an assin historical battle on at the minute here when they catch me so there's plenty of rear tyre so I can kind of steer it with the rear but I can't really roll it into the corner the way I want to. You can see it wide all over the curbs. It's not the way you want to be. So they are growing into it at the moment. I'm surprised still that he's managed to hold Peko off and Fabio. I just want to get the gap now up to about a second and a half again if I can. Just to take the pressure off. Still sitting on a second, so we're about matching each other. Damn good through that chicane after him, though. I'm going to pull out a tent or so on him. Just got it up to a second. And we're in hot air. We are in hot. 
let's drop them back down to under a second so we're on the penultimate lap here and they are still catching us it's these long corners here I can't get the bike turned in and stopped more importantly into strobe and I have to take a so gingerly he's still there don't reckon with just raw pace he'll catch me though he doesn't look to be able to gap it when I'm riding without making mistakes which is not very often at the moment as the front tire gets worse and worse I start to make more mistakes Still a second, he's still, I'd say he's giving everything, but I don't think he has enough. Oh, rear end let go in there. I seem to be very good in this last sector compared to the eye. Just make sure of it now this time around, just get through cleanly like we've done. Last lap time, it's a second. He's going to need something special to catch me unless I make a huge error. Negotiate a turn one cleanly. Oh, it looks good so far. We're just we're holding him off in the sector where we're weak. We're deep in here though. But not not close enough yet to dive and we actually had great exit so whatever line we took there we got a great run out of there or he got a really bad one Peko still sits on his back wheel for the whole race I'm surprised he hasn't managed to get past or even attempt it because I believe Peko would have probably got onto the back if he had clear track we have half a lap to go to complete another one absolute dominant race we've had it from Tom won the whole way. We've had it from the start line. I don't know if Fabio ever actually got ahead of me, but he was alongside me for some of it. But we're not there yet. 1.2, 1.3. I think he's settling in for it. Does a crash further back. Not one to the top eight, thankfully. Last sector. We're going to come around to win another back to back race in Paul. We just had the extra bit today. Up the line we come. Victory in the Netherlands. Get in. So, dominant display in the end. A woman at 30.4 was beaten on that last lap. Who? Maverick Van Hal is down into 29.9. That is serious corner cutting from the Aprilia man. I'd actually struggle to do that lap time. Rossi with 30.6 at the end of the race. I just, I think it's so funny how they... How they managed to just teleport on the last lap. But nonetheless, victory, 25 points. And the championship lead has grown to 41 points to Peko. We have a stronghold of this championship at the moment. As we're coming up now to the halfway point of the season. 180 points compared to 140 odd for Peko. And Jack is 70 behind. And Fabio, I'm afraid, his title defence. He jumps into fourth today after getting P2. But he had such a poor start, a couple of crashes, and he's yet to really show anything. Crashing out in the last round as well. Very disappointing, but... Yeah, we are dominating. 140 points back to Suzuki. Monster Engineer only fourth with the Yamaha team. And the Constructors, 93 points ahead of Yamaha. So Yamaha and Suzuki keep trading first and sec or second and third place. And we dominate the rest of the field. But uh, overall, great result here in the Dutch TT. So let's see how the juniors got on in the Moto 2 class. P9 for Dom. Another top 10. Brilliant result from him. 9th on the grid. 9th in the race. 19th for Carmon and 19th in the race. So not too bad. Hope for a little bit better. But the real one we look for is the Moto 3. How did they get on? Rizal has done it again. Double podium. So he qualified third. Wins the race. And a good recovery from 6th for Hernandez to get onto the podium. So that's another brilliant result for us in the Moto3 class. 
but I am going to leave it there for today's episode. I hope you all did enjoy as much as I did. If you did, drop a like down below and subscribe to see more of me in the future. Thanks for watching. Bye-bye.